This week, we're all at sea. Or are we? Is it a plane or is it a boat? It's a hovercraft. And if you want to get all technical about it, it's a Pindare Skimmer 12. Born in the psychedelic 70s, the Skimmer 12 hovercraft was big enough to host a party and would scoot along at nearly 50 miles an hour. Built in 1975, the Skimmer 12 was a child of free-spirited times. Giant hovercraft have come and gone, but it's this revolutionary machine which has become the model on which all modern hovercraft are based. But for all that the Skimmer 12 is the daddy of modern hovercraft, its cushion got deflated long ago, and it's been grounded in this Hampshire barn gathering dust and pigeon droppings. But not for long because Claire and I have turned up with her original designer and namesake, Mike Pinder, in a bid to get her flying again. Whoa, so there oh. she blows. The hovercraft that you built with your own fair hands, Mike. Well, uh, a team of us. I didn't do it all myself. It's looking in a bit of a way now, eh? It's, yeah. a, it's one hell of a state, isn't yes. it? 30 like years on, we all age a bit, don't we? <laughs> what do you reckon, Claire? My gut reaction is unspeakable, mm. so I'll just go and have a proper look at it. So, Mike, where did this interest in hovercraft come from? Well, I was um, in the oil industry. I would have been about 19 or 20. I was on the jetty and I saw this strange device going past, looking a bit like a cup and saucer, a flying cup and saucer, if you like, and a big cloud of steam, and that was the SRM-1, the first hovercraft. Do you so, remember what you were thinking when you saw the first hovercraft? What the hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> it was 1959, and Mike had seen a vision of the future, the first new form of transport since the aeroplane. Christopher Cockrell's brand new invention, the SRN-1, was a completely amphibious machine, and a British one at that. It was the birth of the hovercraft. In the white heat of technology that was the 60s, people thought this was going to be the transport of the future, and Mike was one of them. I built my first hovercraft um, in a spare bedroom. Gradually developed it so I could see that there was a market for it. So I started up my own company and uh, eventually built about 200 of them. Um, all sizes up to about 12 seats, which is, is the Skimmer 12. Soon Mike was out of his bedroom workshop and was top man in the company that bears his name. Here he is, demonstrating just how pedestrian friendly his hovercraft were. Unfortunately, the company went bust in 1982, but the skimmer was its proudest achievement and attracted buyers from far and wide. So, Mike, you built this hovercraft nearly 30 years ago. Yeah. And where's it been in those 30 years? It's been all over the world, actually. Um, originally, it was built for the Sultan of Oman. But this royal skimmer fell from grace, and 15 years later, it ended up sunk in a London canal from where Mike rescued it from oblivion. It was in a bit um, of a sorry old way at that point. It was very, very sad. All, all the windows were smashed in, had been vandalised. It was full of water. The wooden bits were all going rotten. The metal bits were all going rusty. So it was, it was a sad sight, but uh, I felt that it was an important part of the history of hovercraft and it ought to be saved. How's it looking, Claire? Well, that's not good, is it? It's in its most dangerous state for a restoration project because someone's taking it apart and we don't know where all the stuff is. Do you think it's all here, Mike? I think it's all lying around here somewhere. Here, uh, there and indeed everywhere. Yeah. So the deal, should you wish to accept it, Mike, would be we'll do our damnedest to restore the craft back to its former glory, but you won't be able to see it until it's done. How does that feel? That's OK. So long as it's, it's restored to its former glory and perhaps I'll be allowed to drive it. Of course you will. Let's call it a deal. Right. But we're not going to repair her here in this drafty barn. Let's move it out. Although she's only 30 years old, this is the last Skimmer 12 in the world. So, as usual, we've brought in the very best in the business to move her. Or perhaps we haven't. Looks like that's another job on the list. Well, I'm off. It was nothing to do with me, Gov. I'm leaving Claire to pick up the pieces while I go and find out some hover history. 
and they've shed loads of history here at the UK's only hovercraft museum. I've come to see Warwick Jacobs, the curator of this collection. He's got all kinds of hovering hybrids, but he's lacking one vital ingredient. Yeah, this is a great little craft, little two-seater hover hawk, 1968, took two people, but that was its problem, only took two people. And what we need is something a bit bigger that can carry people, do displays, lots of spray, noise and action, and really capture people's imagination. It's nothing static like this, something really going. And that's where the Skimmer 12 could be absolutely fantastic. Where better for the Skimmer 12 to end up? The only working hovercraft amongst the skeletons of her sisters. Mike has kindly agreed to donate her to the museum, but only if we can get her working again. Well, if our skimmer is ever going to hover again, we'll need the help of a real propeller head. John Gifford is Britain's foremost hovercraft expert. He's been building and driving hovercraft for over 30 years. Here he is, a lot younger, honing his driving skills at Mike's company, Pindare. He became so proficient that he's now the stunt hovercraft driver on James Bond films. But his 007 cool is both shaken and stirred by the sight of the wreck we've delivered to his yard. Right, John, what do you think? Well, there's, a, there's a lot to do. There's I'm sorry. To... I'm sorry to land it on you, but you were the best man for the job. If we're going to get this hovering heap of hardware off the ground, Captain Suggs will have to assume command. What? Me, Suggs, alone in charge of a giant hovercraft? I'll be getting into a rubber skirt and we'll be battling the breeze. So hang on, we're in for a rough ride. This week we're in Southampton, trying to transform the beaten up old wreck of a 1975 Skimmer 12 hovercraft back into pristine condition. It's a tall order, but veteran hoverhead John Gifford has seen it all before. I've been involved right really since the, uh, the initial contact, in fact before uh, the, that hovercraft that size was built because uh, when I was back at school I built a small hovercraft that was powered by two-stroke engines. Back at school? <laughs> yeah. You want to learn what was funny about that? I didn't think there was a funny line there. Did you just get Try hold of a again. lawnmower or something? That's uh, not normal. Uh, no, I guess not, looking back at it, no. but it seemed normal no. at the time. Most teenagers are souping up cars and chasing yeah. girls, not building hovercrafts no, well, in the back garden. No. Okay. It's all very well chatting, but it won't get the baby bathed, or whatever. So what are the sort of separate areas? If we start logically and work our way through. Well, on the outside is the, the, the inflatable structure, and as, all, as you know, all hovercraft have skirts, so that actually is completely missing on this craft at the moment, so that's... Uh, I don't know where it's gone, but it's certainly not here at the moment. The Skimmer 12 is built around an aluminium hull. Attached to this is something like a giant rubber ring, which makes sure it's safe and buoyant on the water. Below this hangs the skirt, which we're missing. The skirt holds in the air cushion on which the Skimmer, like all hovercraft, floats. This air cushion is generated by a huge fan connected to the engine. In the Skimmer 12, the engine also powers the propeller, which pushes the craft along. So then the next thing is what, all about the back, the propulsion side Yes, of well, that, that's obviously a major concern because there's, it's, um, there's items here which are obviously right back 20, 27 years old. Oh. But the propeller is basically, you know, basically sound. So some of the, the nasty, expensive bits are OK. But, oh, I've um, noticed that. Nasty, mm. expensive bits we don't want to replace. Yeah. And then, of course, there's that wonderful 70s trim in there, yes. which you really can't. Draw uh, your eyes from, can no, you? No, no, that's... Uh, Look at that. That's, uh, well, it's, it's obviously got to go back looking like like it was. I mean, hopefully, the seats, remarkably, uh, oh, they've got to be rebuttoned, but, I mean, they, the actual fabric seems to have stood up to Nothing it. Nothing destroys is... orange vinyl, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's going to be here in 100 years' time. The hole will have rusted away, but the seats will be here. <laughs> it's going to be a real challenge to get Mike's old skimmer off the ground. But we're in the right place. John's company has got experts in every aspect of hovercraft engineering, from Mr. Mechanic Darren to the skilled hands of Craftsman Bill. It does look like a bomb's gone off in here, doesn't it? It does. 
I've got no idea if all these bits are from this hovercraft. I don't know where that came from. Definitely okay. keep that. That's it. We can't have a hovercraft without a skirt, the sort of inflated bit that lifts it up. So we're going to have to find some plans and get a new one made. This rubber's not much good for anything. Underneath these covers is the rubber inflatable, which keeps the hovercraft afloat when it's on water. Sliding it out should be plain sailing, but it just won't budge. There's only one thing for it. Cut it out and hope we can repair it later. Here we go, last bit. Was that the bit you wanted to cough? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Claire's cutting through the repairs, I've been revving up the archives again, finding out how the hovercraft caught people's imaginations back in the wacky 60s, when everyone was hovering around. It isn't quite a boat. It isn't really an aircraft. You can't call it a bus. Londoners aren't sure what to make of the thing. Anyhow, it's definitely new. Its official name is the Denny D2 hover bus. The fare, a quid a trip. Absolutely the very latest invention to come onto the caravan scene. Making its world debut, the Hover Sprite, a caravan come hovercraft. Directional controls are mounted on the side of the built-in wardrobe. Hovercraft are making a bid to be the farmer's best friend. And that means the farmer can get his work done when he wants. Whereas with an ordinary tractor, it would be impossible. Now there's a hopeless position for you, well and truly stuck. Temper, temper. You must get one of those hover trucks with a bit of skirt. Sadly, there are no hovercrafts in the fields or on the Thames these days, and all those crazy contraptions are long gone. But our owner, Mike Pinder, has told me about a couple of chaps who got caught up in their early hover hysteria. Now most people dream of leaving their wedding receptions in a Rolls Royce or a horse-drawn carriage. But for Nigel Jones and his best man, only one vehicle would do, the Skimmer 12. Well, I've managed to track down Mr. Jones and his best man, and I've arranged to meet them down by the river. Manufacturers, inflatable life rafts, inflatable jackets and so on. I don't know if these will bring back any memories. Oh, gosh, yes, these are... I've got an album of these. You look a bit I... younger there, Nige. <laughs> <laughs> As the photos show, the boys' harebrained scheme involved Nigel and his new wife, Cathy, abseiling down from a pub balcony onto the Skimmer 12, which was waiting to whisk them away on honeymoon. We descended down from the balcony of the Samuel Pepys onto the hovercraft. And how did Cathy feel about that? Um, slight reservations, I would say, were the, uh, <laughs> the order of the day. That's well put. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's been like that ever since, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these really were the early days of hovercraft. How did it feel? No one I knew had been on a hovercraft. It was, it was completely different. It was a sort of going away that no one else had ever done or even thought of. So that was quite a nice feeling. From the spectator's point, it was really spectacular. There was mm. Nigel with a bottle of champagne in his yeah. hand. And as they took off and went, the, the wind flowing through their hair and all uh, Cathy's bridal dress flowing out behind it, it was something I, I can still see that in my mind. Ah, oh, sweet. I love a happy ending. I'm surprised they didn't go on honeymoon in the hover caravan. They really were exciting times, but our skimmer hasn't much of a future unless I can find some plans for Claire, because it seems our craft has taken a bit of a battering in its life. Well, now we've finally got the hovercraft up on its side, we can have a really good look at the hull, and it's actually worse than we expected. On this back corner here, it's obviously had a smash on several occasions because it's got several layers of patches all laid on top of each other and it's not good. So I think we think we're going to just take it all out and start again. Back here where the battery was, well you can see an awful lot of daylight through there, so that's going to have to be patched. And this area here, well this should all be solid hull, but we've had to cut a huge great big hole out of it, which has enabled us to see the main fan which gives the hovercraft all its lift. but. 
still going to need to be repaired. Luckily, I've got a man onto it in the form of Keith Ellis, patcher extraordinaire. I think that'd do. Should we go and try it then? Yeah. Is the hull as bad as you thought it would be? Worse. Worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that, That's Keith. Lovely. Good as new. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to cut that bit out there, because when you're trying to lose weight, every little helps. Don't worry, girls, this air-powered saw comes in a compact handbag size. It's a good tool, but not enough sparks. You all right then, Keith? Yeah, okay. Ready? Yeah. Ruin my manicure. Riveting up the hull like this is not too different from the way aircraft were made, and that was the big problem for the early hovercraft. Because they sort of flew, people built them like aeroplanes with huge jet engines costing millions. This was why the skimmer was so revolutionary. Mike made it like a boat and put a cheap petrol engine in it. It worked just as well as its expensive jet-powered sisters, and nowadays, almost all hovercraft use the simple technology pioneered on the Skimmer 12. The fancy ones, like this 300-ton SRN4, just sit in museums. Wow! This is it. What? Me, Suggs, alone in charge of a giant hovercraft? <laughs> That really is like being inside a giant aircraft. Come on, mate. Let's go. Look, he's flying it as well, look. Sit still. Ignition on. Check. Huge, great propellery things on. Check. These Concords of the Water entered service in 1969 and slashed the time it took to cross to France from two hours to just over 30 minutes. But her four Rolls-Royce gas turbine engines burnt 700 gallons of fuel per hour and cost a fortune to maintain. The oil crisis of 1975 literally blew them out of the water. Now, like the dinosaurs, those jet-powered monsters are gone. And today's hovercraft are closer relatives of Mike Pinder's cheap v 12 engine skimmer, based on boat building rather than aircraft technology. I need more power. I couldn't give you any cup. So, I thought you'd come to look at the archives. Ah, right, yes. Come on. Fair enough. <clears throat> no mucking about now, I'm leaving you in charge. I'm back at the Hovercraft Museum to try and find Mike's early plans. So, Warwick, what have we got here? Well, there's about 15 or 16 drawers of drawings. Somewhere there is a skimmer 12. Great. Start from the top, work your way down, and I'll get the coffee for you. Oh, no, thank you. Hmm. Nothing in there. When he retired, Mike donated all the drawings and archives from his Pindare company to the Hovercraft Museum. I hope what we want is here. Angle projections. No. Plans. But not of a skimmer 12. Oh, hello, hang on. Pindare. Now, this is looking a bit more promising. Hey, hey, hold on. Yep. There she blows, the skimmer 12. Well, if Claire isn't pleased with that, she can blow me down with a feather. Mike's use of simple boat building technology was a big hit, creating a market for small commercial hovercraft. At a fraction of the cost of a helicopter, skimmer 12 can perform tasks which have hitherto been uneconomical or impossible. He sold over 200 skimmers, many of them going abroad. Aha! Uh, uh -huh. Photographs. Now then. That looks like a skimmer 12. Hold on. Aha! Uh -huh. And here's one of a crate with some Arabic writing on. 
and also it's got the Pindare logo. Now, I remember Mike saying that our skimmer was shipped to Oman. Well, maybe I should go to their embassy and see if I can find out anything about it. While Suggs is heading for the Orient, I'm going somewhere pretty exotic myself. Malcolm Cox's Rubber Emporium, where I hope to fix her inflatable and the skirt. Well, Malcolm, have you managed to make any sense of this holy rubber mess? Yes, yeah, I think uh, we're making progress on it. Is it salvageable? Oh, yes, it's salvageable. This inflatable keeps the hull afloat when it's not hovering. And it's also the attachment point for the missing skirt which holds in the air cushion. But the rubber has rotted away, so it won't inflate. But we're not trying to make it watertight, are we? No, no. What, what we're proposing to do, and we've started work on here, uh, we've made a, uh, a slot in the inflatable cover. Mm -hmm. And rather than try and make the inflatable cover itself airtight, uh, we're going to put uh, airtight bladders inside. Just big bags. Uh, big bags, that's right, yes. We'd better get this right, or we'll be sinking, not hovering. Let's face it, if it can withstand my weight, the sea is not going to be a problem. There's no time to celebrate. I'm back in the workshop to inspect the damage inflicted on the duct by our rough handling. What is this stuff? Well, it's a mixture of ply and uh, filler and newspaper and fiberglass. OK, so, so this isn't the original, is it? Oh, certainly not. What no. would the original have been? It would have been birch ply just over this framework, but it has rotted. The ply's rotted, the face is gone, some of the timbers are gone, and they've just filled it with newspaper and then skimmed it over with filler and fiberglass. So it's a real bodge up, and it's actually quite dangerous. If some of it had dropped off and fallen into the prop, yeah. it would have done mega damage. Perhaps that accident was a lucky one, because the break in the duct has revealed shoddy repair work in the past. It should be made of lightweight plywood, but it's been repaired with decorator's filler and newspaper. A bodge job and an incredibly dangerous bodge at that. If this filler had shattered, it could have wrecked the prop and sent lethal shards flying. It means a complete rebuild of the duct, something we hadn't counted on. We've really got our work cut out now. Our restoration of a 1975 Skimmer 12 hovercraft has hit choppy water. This lady has no skirt, and she's been mistreated. It's a real bodge up, and it's actually quite dangerous. But we're determined that she'll ride the waves once more. And while Claire sorts out the mess, I'm on diplomatic business up in London, looking up an old friend of the Skimmer 12. I don't know about you, but I thought it would be a jolly good idea to try and convince the Sultan to take a ride in his old hovercraft when we've had it restored. Well, I've got a nice suit, I've got an appointment at the Oman Embassy. What do you reckon? Do you think you'll fancy taking a spin in it for old times' sakes? I shall let you know. The Sultan of Oman is the ruler of this oil-rich country. And over a nice cup of tea, the embassy staff explained how in 1975, their boss had a bit of a problem. These three craft, leaving the Pindare factory at Gosport in England, are bound for a customer 4,000 miles away. He needed a fast way of shifting himself and his staff between his palace on the coast and his luxury yacht, as you do. The Skimmer 12 was the perfect solution. It was easy to drive and simple to maintain, and quite groovy as well. 
It was in service for years until the Sultan traded his yacht in for the bigger version with a helicopter pad. Cool, I could do with one of those myself. Well, I've had a lovely cup of tea, but unfortunately the Sultan is a very busy man and can't make it. But he does seem to remember our old hovercraft with some affection, and he's given us the right to put the Royal Oman crest on the side of it. And he's made a small donation towards its rebuild. What a lovely chap. One of the reasons the skimmer was attractive to the Sultan and other buyers was that its basic mechanics made it easy to operate and to maintain. It was a crucial decision because other early hovercraft needed huge amounts of power. They used gas turbine engines from the aircraft industry. These were expensive, heavy on fuel and fiendishly complex to repair. The skimmer made a real breakthrough using bog-standard Chevy V8s. However, our engine is far from perfect. I reckon this engine's not going to run. It just needs a good clean. It is amazing what you can do with a wire brush. But we cheated and got a reconditioned engine. 240 horsepower, 5.7 litres. What a brute. The V8 might be powerful, but it's as common as muck. Just what you need for an easy to operate hovercraft. Over 30 million of these engines have been manufactured and they've been selected for their compactness, lightweight, reliability and worldwide spares availability. As always, it's me, Suggs, who has to bring my engineering skills to Claire's rescue. Well, Claire, I'm suitably attired and ready to help. Looking very beautiful today. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> just sensible shoes. Uh, well, we're about to lift up the engine and put it back in the um, craft, I believe is the correct term. Yeah. Keep being told off for calling it a boat. So, um, <laughs> get going on the chains. This one? Go on. Oh, oh, hold on. It'll oh. take some time. <laughs> right, OK. Is this going to be hard? I oh, know it's not. It's just a lot. It's not going very fast, John. Well, you seem to be taking your time over it. I'm going as fast as I can. Ah, oh, these projects are great when everyone pulls together. Got <laughs> <laughs> another fall down. Down. Are we there? Yeah. Hope yeah. yeah. you line that up properly, Claire. I'm not pulling it out again. <laughs> Well, that's 200 horses rearing to go. What next for Suggs' magic touch? Well, Darren, even to the untrained eye, I would surmise that this is the propeller. Uh, yep, it certainly is. Yeah. It looks like it needs a bit of work. Yep, we've got a few uh, cracks and things on it. They're not looking too good. Will this start falling to bits, then, if we don't? It certainly will, yeah. These bits will come flying off if we uh, try and run it like well, that. We don't want that. Is this the first? Suggs doesn't cock it up. Wait and see. Well, it's probably a little bit too soon, but Darren's very capable of getting rid of a few blobs. Of course, the only way to truly find out if that's stuck properly is when it starts some um, turning around at 150 mile an hour. Yeah, I'm stood well clear. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> <clears throat> See that? When Claire's not here, everything's going swimmingly. <laughs> she just doesn't trust me. But you trust me, don't you, Darren? I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single-handedly saving this project, Claire. While the mouth is singing his own praises, I'm getting down to it, repairing the wooden propeller duct with Bill. And our middle line to Mark. making cakes. This design was a stroke of genius. Not only did the duct concentrate the power of the propeller so that all the push went backwards, it also muffled the noise, making the ride quieter. You happy? Yeah. Staple it. Well, what do you think? I reckon you can make a living doing this, Bill. 
Right. I'll try. It's almost professional. <laughs> almost. <laughs> You're happy with it, aren't you? Yeah, very happy. Very happy. Good job. Good job. OK. It's all coming together, man. 56 metres long and capable of 65 knots when her four Rolls-Royce Proteus gas turbines kicked out their full 50,000 pounds of thrust. The SRM4 was for many the pinnacle of hovercraft design. Now they're long gone, killed off by high fuel and maintenance costs. But the hovercraft is not dead and I was keen to see what had replaced them in the world of commercial hovercraft. Hence my trip to the Isle of Wight with Mike Pinder. Hello, sorry. Hello, then. How are you going? The Portsmouth to Isle of Wight shuttle has moved with the times and is now a hover success story. I must say, it's a fabulous way to travel. It really does feel like you're flying. I'm yeah. presuming it can cope with this kind of choppy. Oh, stuff. yeah. Yes, this craft seemed operating in Force 8 conditions here with quite big waves. Oh, I don't know what you think of the ride, but a bit like an aircraft. Is, is it, it is indeed, it is. With the occasional bit of turbulence, but yeah. you don't drop 2,000 feet, which is nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> the ferry started in 1965 with the SRN6, powered by a Rolls Royce gas turbine, and has carried 20 million passengers to date. I go to the office every day, like lots of other people. Only down here, we commute by hovercraft. We could go by boat, of course, but hover travel is, well, quicker. On a day like this, we're soon doing 50 knots. What began with an aircraft-based hovercraft, the SRN6, now uses a commercially viable modern craft based on marine technology like the skimmers. So this is a lovely looking craft, Mike, but what's so special about this one? Well, this is a direct descendant of the Skimmer 12. It uses a lot of the same technology. In fact, the AP-188 is just like a big Skimmer 12. It has a welded aluminium hull, ducted propellers, and uses simple diesel engines. The Skimmer 12 was really the start of the third generation of hovercraft development. But How does it make you feel travelling on this? Great. It's, uh, it's nice to see, you know, it's the state of the art of hovercraft and it's still the beginning of what will be a major force in transportation around the world. So you still have a great deal of optimism for the hovercraft? Oh, I do, yes, yes. So, our Skimmer 12, far from being a washed-up has-been, is in fact the forerunner of these and all modern machines. Well, the future looks bright for these hovercraft, but until we make the last crucial component of our Skimmer, We'll be going nowhere. Early hovercraft didn't use skirts. They just had jets of air to keep them floating. But this open design made them difficult to steer because they followed the contours of the ground. The solution was a curtain of material which holds in the air cushion, making the craft far easier to control. Trouble is, it's not a solid piece of material, but 106 pieces called fingers which all have to be made by hand. And guess who's got the job? Gonna have to speed up. Hundred and two, hundred and three, hundred and four, hundred and five, hundred and six. Bingo! And the result of all my hard work? 106 fingers of rubber that look like half an ice cream cone. These are all lined up around the base of the hovercraft and will funnel the air jets downwards. The skirt will be attached to the rubber inflatable we repaired earlier and it's this lump we have to attach to the hull first. So that goes in there. And in this high-tech age, there is an essential bit of kit for getting the inflatable in place washing up liquid. Is that working, Bill? Are you sure about this? Nice and clean. <laughs> OK. Oh, love that, love that. <coughs> All right, not about no, six inches and that's, that's it. Right, that's it. OK. Ooh. 
job done. Well, that wasn't bad. After all that moaning and complaining, the washing up liquid did it. That and six blokes. But the washing up liquid mainly. Let's get some air in this thing. Now we've blown up the inflatable, we can get on with attaching the skirt. In the old days of aircraft-style hovercraft design, the high-tech boffins would probably have developed some kind of space-age glue to do this. Mike, however, found a bit of string work just as well. Now it's the turn of the duct, which we broke last time we shifted it. But let's hope we don't have a repeat performance, as now it's as good as new. I like the way, Bill, you're treating it with kid gloves now. You need to, all the work has gone into it. Oi, Claire, there's some particularly fine workmanship on that propeller. Look after it. That's pretty good. Can you get off? Yeah. That's yeah. That's fantastic. There's one part of the hovercraft, though, which has needed absolutely no attention whatsoever. Those indestructible orange vinyl seats just have to go back in for that authentic 70s ghastliness. For a sultan, but I can't lounge around. We promised Mike that he'd get the chance to drive his beloved skimmer again, and the Hovercraft Museum have asked if we can deliver in a couple of days, as they want time to test her out before a big fundraising event. We'd better get cracking. It's like that, Claire. Any other way? That's good. The Skimmer 12 has been a real team effort. We've had electronics, carpentry, metalwork, we've even made a rubber skirt. And everyone's confident that their bit works. But will it all work together? Will we get a nice smooth ride, or will it just tear itself to pieces? After a late night, we're nearly done. But we still have to run vital tests on its seaworthiness. I don't like the look of that weather. It's not too bad here. But out at sea, the wind is howling and the waves are choppy. We really need to take her out, but this is a completely untried machine. If we've made any mistakes in our rebuild, this unforgiving sea could sink our project. Dare we risk it? Of course we do. What do you think then, John? Oh, it's, it's a bit of a, a lump on the water, but in fact the wind has not... I think it's dropped a bit now, so... Uh... We're actually quite sheltered here. Yeah, we are sheltered here, yes. Uh, I'm still being blown about, though. Yeah, yes, yes, it's uh, not quite smooth. How will the hovercraft react to it? Well, it, the main, it, it, it handles the waves quite well if they're you know, this sort of size, but, of course, it is... We have just put it all back together again after being apart from it 10 years, so it's not the ideal thing to go into a... You want a mill pond out well, there, don't you? Well, it's nice to have it calmer rather than rougher, certainly. Do you want to chance it? Yeah, we'll go, at the start, I'll go down there a bit further and just see what it looks like in the fix gets worse, we'll turn around and come back okay. here. We'll see if Suggs' stomach is up to it. <laughs> yeah. He's looking a bit green just looking <laughs> out here. I really don't fancy being stranded out there on the high seas. I think I'll check this weather thing out myself. Now, much as I appreciate Claire, on this particular occasion, I really, really don't feel like taking a hovercraft out in this. Can you tell her when next time you see her? Let's hope that the Sultan's crest will bring us luck. I think I'll need it, because Claire has somehow managed to press gang me into joining the hovercraft crew for the restored skimmer's maiden voyage. Claire, it's getting really rough out there. Come on, go to you. I don't fancy this at all. <laughs> Help! Help! This craft is taking a right battering, and this is only in the estuary. 
It will be much worse out in the open seas. We haven't even begun our checks, but John is adamant that it's not worth the risk. Safety has to come first. So, thankfully, we're turning back. Sucks made me happy, but it's not good news. The skimmer still isn't tested, our owner Mike is expecting to drive it tomorrow, and worse still, the weather forecast is bad. Will he ever get his hands on his beloved hovercraft again? Our beautifully restored Skimmer 12 took a right battering when we tried to take her out for trials. But overnight, the weather has cleared and conditions look perfect for some hover action. Now, this, Claire, is the weather of a hovercraft. That's a bit of a mill pond out there, isn't it? Beautiful. Stop rocking it. Oh, go I on. said stop it's it. It's all right, I've got you. You won't fall. Get out of it's it. And she really looks a treat with all her new fixtures and fittings. She'll be a very special exhibit where she's going today. The Hovercraft Museum is about 20 miles away by sea. And on the way, I've arranged to pick up our owner, Mike Pinder, from a Southampton beach. He's in for a real surprise, because the last time he saw her, she was a heap of rubber, wood and metal. It's an incredible transformation for this formative machine. Now it's time for James Bond stunt driver John to put her through her paces. Let's see how she handles over thick, undulating mud banks. Like a dream. Now for the open seas. With the water like a mill pond, even me, Seaman Suggs, is beginning to enjoy the ride. Yeah, it's a different way to travel. Still, all going very well now. Yeah. Do you want to have a go to driving it? Yes, please. Of course I do. Everything was going smoothly until there was a change of driver. Where are those learner plates? Yeah, that's a problem. The trouble with this machine is that although it's simple to drive, it's incredibly hard to drive well. I'll keep oversteering, then having to swerve back. We'll be zigzagging all day at this rate. But I don't think Mike is too concerned about my beach landing technique. He's just delighted to clap eyes on his restored marvel. Morning. Hello. Look all right to you. Yeah, it looks beautiful. <laughs> just as we built it. Yeah, it goes pretty well too. Good? Yeah. Very smooth ride. It all looks absolutely wonderful. So does that bring back some memories, Mike? Lots of memories, yeah. Every 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 nut and bolt's a memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's another of your little babies. Yeah. Are you looking forward to getting it out on yes. the water? Again? Yeah, I'd love to love to drive it again. But it's I... a beautiful day, it works. Right. Off you go. Right, thank you. Come on, John, you better right. supervise. <laughs> We're away, with Mike behind the wheel for the first time in years. But he still seems to have the knack. Well, well done, Claire. It seems to work. Of course it works. We've even restored the original 1970s bumpy ride. I know, that's real attention to detail. And I've got to say, this orange vinyl really suits you. Thank you very much. It goes with your eyes. eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Enthusiasts gather to welcome our Skimmer 12 as it joins the other historic machines in its new home at the Hovercraft Museum. The Skimmer 12 completes the museum's collection and will now be ready and waiting for visitors to share the thrill of these incredible amphibians. For curator Warwick Jacobs, it's a dream come true. Well done, you made it. Fantastic, so absolutely brilliant. Well done, Claire, that was tremendous. Thanks so much. Oh, well, Mike, right. we never thought we'd see this day, didn't no, we? No, it's just... very good. Fantastic. Your very own working hovercraft. I can't believe yeah, it. It's absolutely right. fantastic. <laughs> well done, John. Mike's overcome. Right. <laughs> well, guys, we never thought we'd see this absolutely out of this world, so we've got something of our own to play around with now. We've got so. a fully working operational hovercraft. And we've got to keep it this way. We'll have to keep, keep in touch with you guys to make sure we keep it all going. Uh, uh... I'll tell you, I warn you, the driving is not easy. <laughs> I think we'll leave it to the experts, cos... Uh, Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. We're over the moon. Really. Great. Could never have expected it. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real result for Salvage Squad. With a little help from the Sultan of Oman, we've restored the only Skimmer 12 in the world. The revolutionary forerunner of all modern hovercraft.